In this video, we're going to take a look at installing the file services role, which will allow us to turn our server operating system into a file server to share folders and files among all the computers within the domain. Now you can see on this computer, I've got server manager open already. You can see that I've currently got three roles installed. You do not need to have any of these roles installed on your computer. If you've been following with the lessons, this is my primary server, my primary domain controller, SRV1 which I'm using to install this role. It can be installed on any server operating system that's out there for Server 2008. And what it's gonna allow us to do when we install the role is it's gonna allow us to basically open the firewall permissions and so forth to allow our computer to share folders without any problem among the domain computers. If you wanna run it as a work group, you can do that as well. So there are many different options. I'm gonna go ahead and just go to Add Roles. We're gonna choose Hit Next and then file services. Let me go ahead and hit next. Next. There are many different options we can add to the file services using a distributed file system which is a little bit more advanced. We can also give support for Unix clients or Linux, Linux clients as well. For the video that I'm doing I'm just going to have the basic file server set up so I'm going to leave the default checked. I'm going to go ahead and hit next and install. And It only takes a moment for this to install and now that it's installed, let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And I'm going to go ahead and close the server manager. I've got to choose now where I want to have my folders located on my computer to share out to the rest of the computers on the domain. I'm going to go ahead and just choose the desktop. I'm going to right click and choose new. Choose a folder. And I'll call this one share one. And now that I've created the folder, it is still not being shared. In fact, how I can actually check to see what is being shared is just by going to start and typing in backslash backslash and then the name of the computer and the name of this computer is SRV-1. If I hit enter you can see there's currently two folders being shared. These folders are only being shown because I'm logged in as the administrator. They're not being shared across everybody on my domain. So don't worry if you see these folders show up and you're kind of concerned for security reasons. They're not being shared to everybody on the domain. What I do want to see um, is the share folder, share one, located inside this folder here being shared. And the whole backslash, backslash, uh, that's the UNC path, that can be done to any, on any computer on the network. You can type in on the domain, backslash, backslash, and then the name of the server, and you should see the shared folders that are being provided by the server. Now, I want to make the share one folder shared as well. So I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to go to properties, and the two tabs that I need to pay most attention to are going to be the sharing and the security. I have to go to both in order to properly share a folder on the network. If I go to sharing, there are two different options that I've got to choose from. I've got share and advanced sharing. I almost never choose this option here, do simple sharing. Uh, it's a little bit more complex as far as the file path is concerned. And if I go to advanced sharing, it's actually easier to see my shared folder. So I'm going to go ahead and actually click on that and choose share this folder. There it is. That's the name of the folder that I'm going to share, share one. What I can do is actually change some of the permissions that are on this folder as far as who can read and write and so forth to the folder. You can also see that I've got quite a large number typed in here as far as how many people can actually or users can actually use this folder at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is add, if I go to permissions there, I can take a look. I'm going to add the domain users group to this and that's just because this computer is, is on a domain and I've got it set up and the basically the default group for if I go ahead and type in domain users here and hit OK the default group for everyone that's on the domain is the domain users group and so this is what I'm going to use to kind of give permissions to everybody who is logged in on a computer within the domain. I can go ahead and give them read and write capabilities this is kind of deceptive in the fact that although they've got read and write capabilities here under the sharing, they really do not have read and write capabilities. The reason being for that is we actually have to make changes to both the sharing properties and the security properties in order for this to work properly. So the domain users currently have read and write capabilities. You'll notice everyone has read capabilities. And that's kind of deceptive as well because if everyone does not have the read properties or permissions in the security tab then they do not have read capabilities. It has to be one or the other. Both of them have to be set up for it to work. The one that is most restrictive is the one that actually trumps the other one. And You'll see that here as we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. 
and I'll go ahead and hit OK on this one. And so we've set that up. You can see Share One actually just popped up in there. And so the Share One folder is being shared. However, I need to go to the security, or also called the NTFS permissions. You'll see here that I've only got three different people, actually one person and two groups, that are currently set up for permissions on this folder. If I want all the domain users to be able to use this Share One folder, I must add them here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit and Add. We'll type in Domain Users. And I'm going to go ahead and there this Domain Users. Now that they've got permissions here under the security and permissions on this, the sharing, then what ends up happening is the most restrictive one still applies. But now they've got the ability to at least read both. You can see Read and Execute is already checked. Listing folder contents and reading. If I want to give them write capabilities, I typically choose Modify. I'll go ahead and click that, and you'll notice that by default, write was also selected. Go ahead and hit Apply, and OK. So now let's talk about these domain users. The domain users group is the default group for everyone that's on the domain. They have read and write capabilities under the security tab. They also have read and write capabilities under the sharing permissions. Since they've got read and write capabilities under both tabs, they have read and write capabilities. If I were to remove the write capabilities on one of these two tabs, then the most restrictive one applies, which would be the write only or read only capability. And so you've got to be very careful with this. They have to be set up in both in order for it to work. Keep that in mind. And now to show you what I mean, I'm going to go ahead and create one more share folder. I'm going to go to new folder, call it share2. And we're going to go ahead and right click, go to properties, sharing, advanced sharing. We'll share it. You'll notice permissions are everyone can read. Let's go ahead and add the domain users. And if I just type in domain and hit enter, you'll get a list of all the things here. I'm going to click on domain users. So domain users are there. And this time I'm going to give them change and read. Hit apply. OK. OK. And then go to the NTFS settings or the security settings. I'm going to go ahead and add the domain users. And you'll notice by default, they only have read and execute, list and read. All right, I'm going to forget on this particular folder to actually click modify or write. So I'm just going to leave read capabilities. Hit OK. So on security settings, the domain users only have read capabilities. On sharing, they have read and write. So let's go ahead and switch over to a client computer that's plugged into the switch on my network. And so now that I'm here at the client, what I'm going to go ahead and do, this is a Windows 7 computer that's on my domain. If I just go to start and actually type in the same thing I did on the server, backslash, backslash, the name of the computer, SRV-1, that's the name of the server that has the shared folder. And if I just hit enter, that'll go ahead and open up. So this is the UNC path that I typed in with the backslashes. Basically, it's just the name of the device that you're actually wanting to connect to. In this case, it's a server. If you look there, there they are, shared one and shared two. And if I go ahead and click in shared one, I can go inside that folder, right click. Let's just try to modify some things like creating a new folder. And there I was able to do that. So I have the permissions to write inside of this folder as well as read. You can see I'm reading this folder and I can write to it. Let's go back the shared two folder. If I double click inside of it, I can read it. Let me try to right click, choose new folder. And you can see that my permissions are denied. The reason why they're denied if you remember from earlier, is the fact that the folder, the sharing permissions say I can read and write, but the security permissions say that I can only read. And so the security permissions trump the sharing permissions. You have to have both the write and read capabilities for both the sharing and the security side of your permissions. So this concludes the video on setting up the shared or file services and setting up a shared folder within Server 2008.